Hello and welcome to episode 12 of the Splendor and Unity Crash Course. This episode is going to be on uh, rigging and animation in Blender. So first thing we want to do, uh, let's hit 1 to go to the front view. So uh, one thing to note with uh, anybody who might want their coin rotating as such, um, your origin is not going to allow you to do that in, within uh, code and the, the rig is not going to work very well either. You see what's going to happen? So that's due to the origin of the object. So because I, I personally want it there, but if you do not, go into edit mode, press shift S, and say, uh, as long as your cursor is at the world origin, and your origin of the object is there too, you can say uh, selection to cursor keep offset as I showed you once before, and that'll put the direct center of that dead in the middle for your uh, uh, vertex is obviously bigger than the origin, but you see what I'm saying? You get it right there. And now when I rotate it like this, it'll flip as you might think it would, right? So for me, I'm not going to do that, but just in case you wanted it to, to, to spin that way. Okay, so uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to add an armature. So shift A, armature. And right now it's going to give us one single bone. That's perfect, right? This is a bone. So it added this asset here, uh, or this uh, object here, armature. Uh, and within we have bones, and this is our, our one bone here. But just as a, uh, as a mesh, we can do a couple things with this. So we have object mode, edit mode, and pose mode. So edit is to uh, edit and create your skeleton. Pose mode is, is to pose it. And basically we can create animations using pose mode as well. <clears throat> so what we want to do is just connect this coin to this bone so that when I move this bone around, I can create keyframes on this playback of where it is at that per uh, specific time. In which case, uh, it will move the coin and, and rotate the coin, scale it, and do everything I want it to do like that. So, um, let's go into edit mode. Probably don't need it that high, right? Bring it down to about there. Now, one nice thing to do is come over to this uh, little option here. If you have an armature clicked, you can click this armature settings. Come out of viewport display and click in front, right? And that'll always let you see it kind of like an x-ray through uh, whatever it's in. I prefer to have that checked at all times. You can also change this uh, if it's kind of huge and, and blocking your mesh all the time. You can change this down to a few different things. So stick could work, right? And sometimes that's a little bit too small. Envelope is not bad. Wire is even tinier than stick. So I, I think stick is, is probably good. Let's leave it at octahedral for uh, any uh, for any beginners. So you, most most of the time you'll see bones like this, octahedral. A lot of people use that. I, I, I prefer to use stick nowadays, um, but we'll leave it here. So just to parent this to this, we can uh, create some vertex groups here. So vertex groups basically are going to be, you have a weight attached to this bone from zero to one, anywhere from zero to one. So we can determine how much influence that weight this bone has on these particular vertices, say these here, as opposed to these here, by uh, telling it that value between zero and one. So I'm uh, first of all, I'm gonna parent this, uh, click the coin, hold shift, click the bone, the armature, you can hit Control P, and that will parent something to something else. So right now we want to say set parent to armature deform. We want to say with empty groups, and that'll give us empty vertex groups that we can edit ourselves without actually having it uh, deform yet. So let's say empty groups, automatic weights works very nice for uh, um, more organic creatures or, or people. But we'll uh, we'll try that when we do our character. So let's do it with empty groups. You can deselect these just to select the, the coin. Now you can see it actually added the name of our bone uh, as a vertex group. Now if we had multiple bones, there would be multiple vertex groups. But I want to keep this simple for now and just keep it as one bone. So just bear in mind there could be more than one bone. In which case, there would be more verte vertex groups. They will name themselves by each bone. So we can come in here and rename this bone. Let's just call it root. Right. Go into edit mode, select it. If you had multiple, you'd want to go into edit mode and select that particular bone so you know which one you're changing. Name it root. So now our vertex group has been changed to root. So you just know that they are uh, related in that way. So now we can go into edit mode. And just by selecting vertices, we get this weight option already. Here, when we click assign, it will assign the specific weight. So doing this will, will do nothing until you click assign. All right, so we just want this fully weighted at 100%. Assign. Boom. Now if I tab to go into object mode, I can click the, the skeleton, the armature, hold control and hit tab, and it will put me right into... Uh, Pose mode. So then from here, anything I do with this bone now will happen to the coin. But because we're in pose mode of an armature, we can add keyframes to this playback. So if you've noticed, there is an animation tab here, and it is 10 times better than doing it anywhere else, trust me. So just go into animation here, 
get rid of the it's what it's going to do initially what that was is what this camera is staring at it's going to actually give you a, a letterbox anyway uh come over here so we're still in pose mode so you're gonna have to select so just check here to see what you're in if you can't select things you're trying to select right like i can't really do much about anything else while i'm in pose mode other than use the skeleton so four games unity specifically what you're looking at right here is is especially important you want to go to dope sheet and change this to action editor this is going to give you a list of your animations and it's going to transfer that list into unity properly and it's going to be great now i think the first thing we want to do is just uh create a transform keyframe at where our standard pose is so just where its um, default position is so i'm going to click new that's new animation or action but in unity there'll be an anime it'll be an animation <clears throat> we want to uh, name this probably coin we'll be able to search for these animations after a time you'll get a, a lot in your scenes and in your, in your project so you're going to want to search after a while so it's good to name these things say coin underscore uh, we'll just say default pose good now you have to click this little shield here this means uh, save you just click this shield here and that'll actually save this and uh, make sure it imports <coughs> make sure it imports properly into unity so anyway now we can uh, select this bone or all your bones whatever you have uh, as an armature press i and that's uh, insert so you can insert keyframes here um, available will probably be okay but we're just going to say location and rotation because i never want to actually change the size of this coin during the animation if you happen to right like we can make it bounce stuff like that um you would say location and rotation and scale or you can say available and that would just do everything right so uh, with that we pretty much have our first animation and that's just something that's going to loop and it's just a default pose if we want the coin to not animate essentially okay so next i think i want to create a uh, an idle animation and we could easily do this with code so all i, all I want to do is spin this uh, around uh, in a loop on its uh, vertical axis there so i guess uh, we'll click these two pieces of paper this is new remember from texture uh, in uh, the animation tab here in the action editor, it's going to be new action or animation in Unity. So let's click that. It's actually going to duplicate all your keyframes you had in the previous uh, animation, and that's okay. You can uh, actually use the same hotkeys uh, in this viewport as, as most. So we can delete these keyframes by hitting X, right? We can actually uh, click these and duplicate them, drag them up. We can move these with G. Uh, you can't rotate. You can uh, scale. Now, uh, this little blue line here is going to be your cursor. So if I have these here and I hit scale, it's going to scale out from that. Guys, just to note that. So click this little shield. Make sure our uh, idle pose is going, or our idle animation is going to save. So let's uh, rename this idle. Okay, good. And I think that's fine for our first keyframe. Now, if you have, if you've moved stuff and you want to set your uh, armature back to the, its original position, just hold Alt and press R. What that's going to do is reset the rotation. So if I did this, Alt R, it's going to reset the rotation. If I did this and moved it over here, Alt G will reset its position. If I scaled it, Alt S will reset its scale. Okay, Alt. SRG is going to be uh, your reset. So that's fine. The first keyframe we had uh, before, if you don't have it there, just hit I, and click location and rotation. Let's come up maybe a 10. Uh, let's go to our top view. Let's actually click this little button here too, so we can see uh, our material preview there. Let's go R and 90. All right. I, location and rotation. So uh, if we just sp spun this 180 degrees uh, twice, it would actually spin half one way and then half back the other way and that, that's because uh, you're not exactly changing from one transform to the next here uh, on your decision it's basically going to take the shortest path to that transform between these keyframes so just note that um, we're going to hit r90 and go again hi click location and rotation let's go up to there r90 hi location and rotation and one last one say 39 r90 I location or rotation doesn't matter where you place these keyframes we can uh, speed up or slow down this animation in unity pretty easily so this start and end frame here we can change this to be uh, uh, basically our last frame or uh, one below if it's looping probably best so you hit the space bar and it'll play your animation now uh, when you got an end frame it'll loop right after it hits that All right so that's perfect basically we have our two animations here that are going to uh, export into unity with our uh, FBX file so that's fantastic. So I think we finished here for now. So let's actually export. Let's go, let's click this uh, armature. Let's go Alt R, Alt G, Alt S. Just make sure everything's reset. Let's actually click this X here. And this is just going to uh, remove any active animation this has. So if I go into object mode and I, and I change pose now, or I change frames, it's not actually going to change 
um, the position of everything. Everything's set back to uh, 0, 0, 0. So that's good. So let's save this. Control S. Go into layout. Uh, you want to click the armature and the coin. I'm going to take both. You go File, Export, FBX. I'm going to go Selected Objects, Apply Transform, why not? Uh, crash Course Files Models, perfect. Let's go in here. Coin Asset, FBX. Good. And this will take our animations. Export FBX. Cool. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. Uh, in the next one, we're actually going to go back to our crate. Uh, we're going to fix up the UV mapping. And uh, we'll create the broken object as well. So everything's set up for our player to uh, interact with stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.